And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the WBO Bantamweight Champion of the World uh, from Puerto Rico, Daniel uh, Imene. Well, this fellow never seems to fight a bad fight. This is his eighth World Championship fight tonight. He's only lost one of them, and that was against the brilliant Mexican Marco Antonio Barrera, and even then, he acquitted himself pretty well. Not a big puncher, but very busy, good technician, high work rate, difficult to beat. And the win over Cody, even a lackluster Cody, was an excellent performance, although he was down in the third round of that fight. Yes, which makes it more remarkable. His work rate in that fight was tremendous. He was really, really busy. And he just didn't allow Cody a time to get in the fight. But as you say, it was a, a lackluster Cody. WBO super bantamweight champion. And now moving down to the eight stand, six pound limit. And WBO bantamweight champion as well. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is conducted and sanctioned uh, under the rules of the World Boxing Organization, uh, whose supervisor at ringside is Mr. Louis Perez of Puerto Rico. The steward in charge from the British Boxing Board of Control is Mr. Charles Giles, and the judges at ringside scoring the contest, Mr. Arthur Ellison from Germany, Mr. Cornelio Stucchi from Italy, and Mr. Samuel Levent of the USA. The referee in charge of the action for this contest is Mr. André van der Groenbrol from Belgium, and the timekeeper, Mr. Brian Heath from the Sutton Coalfield. Ladies and gentlemen, live and exclusive on Europe's premier sports channel, Sky Sports and ringside on the road from Mansfield Leisure Centre, it's Big Fight Time. Sponsored by Mansfield District Council and promoted by Frank Warren for Sports Network in association with Alma Engel. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a contest of 12 three-minute rounds to decide the WBO Bantamweight Championship of the World. Between introducing, firstly, in the red corner, and coming from Condorit in Scotland, wearing the white trunks and the black trim, and weighing in an eight stone, five and a half pounds. He has 18 professional contests, 15 wins, Four by way of KO, two losses and uh, one draw. He's the current Bantamway champion of Great Britain. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome Drew Doherty. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, across the ring in the blue corner, wearing the green trunks with the white trim, and coming from Puerto Rico, he weighed in at eight stone, six pounds. He has had 26 professional contests, 20 wins, 10 by way of KO, four losses and one draw and one no contest, and comes to the ring as the current WBO Bantamweight Champion of the World, uh, making the first defense of his title tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Daniel Jimenez. And now the referee will give his instructions to both boxers. Well, I wonder what Doherty must be going through at this moment, Glenn. I think now is the time when really everything's got to get out of his mind except the fight. He's really got to be focused now. And I think it's bad news that he isn't. Belgian referee. Drew Doherty, who's had tremendous support from all the people around him, his family, friends, the Murray family, other boxers in the gym. And that has got him through these last three months. Now he must get back to doing what he does for a living, what he needs to do for a living, starting as a big underdog here. 
as he challenges for the WBO World Bantamweight Championship. Doherty in the white shorts. Jimenez, who calls himself the Cobra. Doherty has to use the boxing ability that he obviously has. He's a very good amateur. He's got to use the jab, use plenty of movement, not mix it with Jimenez. Jimenez is, is very good, very fast, nice little combinations. So I think Doherty's got to keep it at long range behind that jab. Neat boxer, Drew Doherty. He was a good amateur. But this does look a mountainous task for him. It really would be a superlative and sensational effort if he was to somehow win this. Jimenez looks as if he just wants to take a good look at him. Slow start from the Puerto Rican, who's usually busy, busy, busy. Doherty has the right place. He's got the center of the ring. He's got to try and keep it there. Make Jimenez work with his own legs. Good body punches from Jimenez. Doherty himself has never been known as a heavy puncher. Far from it. Has to rely on his skills to accumulate the points. Only four knockout wins in 18 professional fights for Doherty. But his concentration looks okay, doesn't it, Glenn? It does, yes. He looks very concentrated. He's got he's to do that. He's getting the center of the ring. He's using his jab well, and he's pushing Jimenez back slightly. So that's what he, he has to do. He's seeing the punches come from Jimenez, and he's just picking them up with his right hand. Because when we saw Gabriel Ruelas recently, a high-class fighter coming back in similar circumstances uh, to the ones that Doherty faces here, he just seemed to be 100 miles away that night. Doherty looks quite focused, and no alarms for him so far. Jimenez's work has been concentrated to the body. I think he want to bring the, the high-held hands of Doherty down. Last few seconds of the first round. A Puerto Rican doing some good work with body punches in what's been a pretty low-key opener. But Doherty's got through it okay and will feel better for that. Welcome back. There's Daniel Jimenez and Doherty in the other corner. How did you think he did in that first round back? I, th I thought that was a fine round for Doherty. He got the center of the ring. He used his jab. He was nice and busy. Jimenez came back with the body punches towards the end of the round, but I think Doherty just did uh, enough to win that first one. Second round, Drew Doherty in the white trunks. Jimenez in green. Jimenez, who's made a habit of appearing here and causing upsets. He took away Duke McKenzie's world title and then, when not really fancy to do so, beat Alfred Cote, who was very highly regarded there's been a lot of good Puerto Rican fighters, of course, like Wilfredo Gomez, Wilfred Benitez, currently Felix Trinidad, the uh, hard-hitting welterweight. You get the feeling that if Doherty is going to cause the big upset here, he's going to have to outbox and outwork Jimenez. Yes, I think he's, he's got to try and land a, a solid punch to Jimenez early because Jimenez will draw him confidence. He's had a, a bit of a look at Doherty and he's just starting to pick the work rate up a little bit more. So Doherty really has to just keep a good hard work rate and always behind the jab. Good body shot in there from Doherty. He's starting to get his work together. Fall with a hook himself at starting to work quite nicely behind that jab and getting busier. Jimenez is making a target of the ribs. And there's redness already around the ribcage areas on both sides of Doherty. That's nice 
work by Drew Doherty, doubling up on the jab and the right hand. He's had some high-class sparring in the build-up with the uh, good young fighter Michael Brody. Covering up well, Doherty. Those punches from him and it's not getting through. The body shot at the end did. Yes, that was better from Hunez, but good to see Doherty come storming back like this. So far, so good for Doherty. He's showing some real fire here in this second round. He says he's fighting in there tonight, not only for himself, but for the memory of Jim Murray. I think he regards tonight as part of his therapy. A fighter who's found fame in the most tragic of circumstances, Drew Doherty. That was low from Jimenez. Good right to the body from Doherty, who's matching the Puerto Rican in this round. Yes, the work rate from Doherty is good. He's landed with decent punches. But Doherty, Jimenez just trying to do a little bit more. Second round, and Doherty might have nicked it. Here is Drew Doherty who's done pretty well in the first two rounds in this world title attempt. Yes, he did a good concentration. He's really getting his, his work going. You see they're doubling up that left hook. And there's a comeback it's later in the round, starting to get some good body punches. But I think this is a, a very positive start from Doherty. Trained by Benny King, Drew Doherty. Doherty, the 30-year-old Scott from Condorac, the mining village in the white trunks. The green of Daniel Jimenez. I wonder if Jimenez might just pick up the pace a little bit. By his standards, he's looked a little bit flat and lethargic so far. Yes, this has been a, a slow start for Jimenez. I would expect that the corner would have had a word. We'll want him to try and pick the pace up. Just try and rush Doggerty a bit, put a, a little bit more work rate going into it. right hand to the head from the Puerto Rican. Back comes Doherty. He's matching him punch for punch and at times outworking him. Yes, he's doing enough just to keep Jimenez off balance. Jimenez is trying to get set to come forward, but Doherty just puts a ramrod jab out. And far from leaving Doherty shell-shocked and traumatized, it seems that he's come in here inspired because for the first three rounds here, he's fought really as well as one seen him fight for quite a while. He always was a good craftsman, wasn't he, Drew Doherty? Light hitter, but a good craftsman. Yes, he, you know, he holds a win in the amateurs over Wayne McCullough. That shows how good he was as an amateur. McCulloch, of course, now a pro world champion, but a right hand catching Doherty there. If that was better from him and as he just waited till Doggerty put out the jab when Doggerty went to bring it back. It was a, a sharp right hand from him and as to follow. Doggerty took the punch well. There's been one or two questions about his chin more recently. But he absorbed that one well. And I would think the corner would be very pleased with the way he's acquitted himself, though Jimenez finds the opening for another right hand there. The Jimenez starting to get a little more accurate, especially with the, the right hand. He's landing that punch and then coming back with the left hook to the body. And again. Both of them punching pretty well in clusters. Good fight developing. Doherty already doing better than a lot of people had predicted. He's got a, a little better for Jimenez towards the end of the round. He's starting to get his range with the right hand. It's the more hurtful looking shots are coming from Jimenez in a particularly classy right uppercut. Starting to get through. And Doherty doesn't want to take too many of these. He wants to start slipping a few. Mixing it to head and body. Maybe a bit ominously Jimenez here. And I think he will have taken that round.
Well, Doherty had to take some heavy-looking shots from Jimenez in that third round. His own work rate was good enough, but uh, looked a bit damaging, some of them. Yes, the, the right hand that we see there, and he comes back with the left hook. They were, they were good punches, and they just became more and more ominous at the end of the round when he got more and more through. Jimenez in green, Doherty, the Scott in the white trunks. This is the fourth round, due to go 12, of course, for the World Phantomweight Championship, as recognized by the World Boxing Organization. Jimenez just seemed to move through the gears a bit in that third round, and is starting to find his target at the moment with ominous regularity. With yes, the right hand. He's starting to get a little bit more flowing in his work. The rhythm's starting to come. He's landing the right hand, then coming back with the left, and then a right again. So he's just starting to build up a little bit of confidence, him and his. Tough task for Drew Doherty, this. It always was, particularly and what is effectively a comeback fight for him after all the mental anguish. Right hand again gets through from Jimenez. Just starting to look a little bit marked up around the face, Doherty. Yes, I think that right hand hurt Doherty. Just seemed to, to shake for a second. Turning on the class and style now, Jimenez, who's taken control of things in the last three minutes or so. Listen, Jimenez just looking to get a little more power into his punches there. Doherty earning a warm round of applause from the crowd here at the Mansfield Leisure Centre. And it's a good crowd, too, as he just turned the tables in the corner, showing his skills. Again, a right hand gets through. That one hurt him as well. Just a bit unsteady on his feet for a while. And I have to say, at the moment, things don't look that good for Doherty. He's working well. He's just got to keep using the jab, Doherty. He's got to try and keep Jimenez off balance. Stop that right hand from coming out. Jimenez is one of those annoying fighters if you're fighting him. He never seems to have a bad fight. Does everything very well. Not a very big punch of blood now from the nose of Doherty. Signs of the punishment he's having to absorb now. It's better from Doherty. Caught again with the right hand that got through Doherty. And this has been a, a good round for him and there's the right hand is just starting to land very well. Tough one for Drew Doherty, that. Now then, Barry McGuigan is watching with us. What do you think so far, Barry? I think uh, Drew has acquitted himself very well in the first two rounds. I think he's starting to lag behind now. Um, Jimenez has got a, a, a adaptability of a great fighter. He's able to step up on top of you and figure you out pretty quickly. He's now got Drew figured out and he's starting to sit down on his punches and punch with, with real authority here. You can see the difference uh, now that from the early rounds. He hurt, he really hurt Drew with that right hand. That was the, His legs went a little bit shaky at that stage. And again, he finished the round off pretty well, Jimenez. Powerful, hurtful punches up close. Uh, it looks pretty ominous for, for Drew at this stage, but he's got to get back on long punches and keep the fight in the centre of the ring. Doherty's only defeats against Vincenzo Balcastro in a European title bid in Glasgow and against Alfred Cote in a world title bid in Cumbernauld nearly a year ago. So only the best fighters beat him, but Jimenez is one of the best fighters. This is round five. And though he's not a real knockout artist, Jimenez, he does set himself and punch hurtfully. That much is clear. Then has it all square at the moment. I must say I gave that first round to Jimenez, so I've got him a couple in front. But uh, there we are. There are always differences of opinion about these things. 
with Doherty doing the right thing, he's getting back to the jab, just trying to upset the balance of Jimenez, and that's what he's, he's got to try and do. Doherty somehow has to just come through this tough patch in the fight. Yes, it's a, a world title fight. There's always going to be tough patches in world title fights. But this is where he's got to show his character, get back to his boxing, keep the jab working. And shouting at him from the corner, Doherty to jab. Does not let him and has set himself for the combinations. Nice work there from Doggerty. Good jab and then just swear out the way of Jimenez's counter. You sense too from this crowd here tonight that there's a real warmth towards Drew Doggerty. I think they're with him in there. They know what he's been through or can imagine what he must have been through anyway. They want something nice to happen for him. But of course, in sport, rarely does such sentimentality take over. It's it's again from Doherty, it is again the jab working very well. He's just got to keep trying to outwork him and there's with that jab. Doherty needed a better round, and he's having one at the moment anyway. off the pace a little Jimenez here maybe the breathing space that Doherty needs two very high-class technicians in there there's a solid right hand went in from Jimenez there but again he's sticking to his boxing well Doherty Jabs again, doubling up, and then the right hand to follow from Doherty. Good comeback round from him, this one. And he will have won that round through Doherty. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Welcome back. The family of Drew Doherty are here. That's his dad there in the background with the moustache. And I would think they'd be pretty pleased with the way he's acquitting himself so far, Glenn. Yes, they will be. It's a good his concentration still well. Jimenez had a, a good round in the fourth, but Doherty come back well in the fifth with good boxing, using his jab very well, and this is a, a very sensible fight that he's boxing. Coming up towards the halfway point in the contest, Jimenez is disgusted with himself with that lunge with the left hand. He missed by a country mile with it. Drew Doherty, whose brother Wilson is a pro as well. British featherweight title contender. I think I saw him here somewhere in the crowd. Good stuff with his back to the ropes from Drew Doherty. And I think he senses too that this crowd are really with him. And I think that too is lifting him. Yes, a, a good performance. He's really... He's really lifting himself to this sort of job. His boxing is very good indeed. Good footwork, good jab, and then you saw him on the rope just throwing a nice little th flurry there. See, a lot of people were saying he should have had a softer fight to come back to, but I just did wonder whether this challenge might concentrate his mind, and I think that is how it's proving to be. This, this far, this is really bringing the best out of Drew Doggerty. As an amateur, he did beat Wayne McCulloch, the excellent Irishman who's now a world champion, and Johnny Armour, European champion. Two very good wins. That shows his quality. Fight! Looks like 
there's some kind of mark underneath the left eye of Doherty. Whether that's just a swelling or bruise or the beginning of a cut, not quite clear at the moment. We'll take a closer look. Nothing for him to worry about too much, I don't think. Jimenez, as usual, is un unmarked. He seems to have skin that's made of teak. Yes, I think Jimenez is just getting a little bit frustrated by this, the movement that Doggett is giving him. Good tactics, these, from Doherty. Jimenez might have been working him out, but I think at the same time, Doherty's mind has been working, and he's starting to find one or two answers of his own. And there are... Whisper it, but there are just one or two signs here that Doherty could make a very serious argument of this. And Jimenez tried to force him back on the ropes there, but he boxed well in there. He still kept his arms moving and tried to score some points in the corner, Doggerty, and he's, he's doing well. The judges scoring this fight from Germany, Italy, and the USA. The Belgian referee does not score. Well, this is, this is interesting. The plot is thickening here, Glenn, isn't it? Yes, it is, and I've got Doggerty just moving into a, a nice little lead here. He's certainly getting a bit of confidence. It's some good work. He's, Jimenez is pushing him back, but look, he's got the confidence there to trade with Jimenez. And some good little punches he's thrown inside, and then he has the, the sense to get off the ropes and not hang about there too long. Come on, Dave. Come on. Come on, son. Kenny King, Gene Doherty up in the corner. Frankly, he doesn't look as if he needs Gene up. He's an experienced pro now. He's been the British champion for three and a half years. Seventh round into the second half of the fight. And I would think this must be pretty even Stephen at the moment on the scorecards. Yes, well, I've got Doggerty in there. Just starting to pull away a little bit with some good boxing in the last couple of rounds. You've got him ahead, have you? I've got Doggerty ahead. I've got him dead I've got it dead level at the moment. Interesting to know what the judges' scorecards are saying. Of course, we don't have that privilege and pleasure. Interesting. This Jimenez just seems to have gone a bit flat again, doesn't he? Yes, he's just struggling to lift himself, and I think really that's down to Doherty. He's just keeping Jimenez busy enough with that jab, and Jimenez needs to get set for, to land his own punches, and Doherty isn't allowing him to do that. Well, it's all a bit messy in there. Doherty won't mind about that. Throwing lots of leather and growing in confidence, you feel, Doherty. Growing in self-belief. I don't know how much there really was when he came in that he was going to win this world championship. But I think there's some there now. Well, no, he's got the confidence to stand toe to toe with him. And, and at this moment, he's getting the best of it. And I think this man fancies that after the worst night of his life, three months ago he may follow it with the best night of his life can he do that can he keep this up and they're shouting from the Doherty corner keep him guessing keep him guessing Styles there for he stands in close, gets lots of punches off, and then he's back to the boxing again. And that is just keeping him there guessing for this moment. I must say, for the first time since I've seen him and as he looks a little bit bemused at the moment. I wonder if he came into this thinking it might be a pretty easy job, all things considered. And he's getting a nasty surprise. He wouldn't be the first. Yes, well, he must obviously, he knew the, the courty result, so that may have just given him a, a, self, a, a false sense of, of what he could do, but certainly, again, good work from Doherty. That is Doherty's round again, and Jimenez gets a warning 
from the Belgian referee for punching after the bell. This year, Ryan Hilner just seems to be a little bit bemused. He's frustrated. He's not know what to do in there. Uh, I tell you what, when he went back to the corner there, he was he was shouting and busily talking away to the cornerman as if something was troubling him. They're not happy. That's frustration. He's not quite sure what he's got to do. And this is where Douglas just comes down, changes style a bit, has the confidence in this round to stand toe to toe with him and his. And look, he's the one that's throwing the punches. He's the one that's getting the best of it. I just wonder as well, as we watch this action back again, though, whether this is one of these fights, it already is in a way, with little changes in the plot as we go along, and you wonder what other phases in the fight there may be in the five rounds still to come. But it's a, it's a fascinating one, isn't it? Yes, and as we saw there, Doherty just getting the best of that work. Round eight. Glenn McCrory has Doherty pulling away a little. I have him just in front. We don't score, needless to say. Not officially, anyway. I'm sure Jimenez knows at this point that he needs a big round. Doherty has to be careful about that right hand of Jimenez that seemed to shake him up a little bit earlier on. I think the, the thing that has surprised me is the work rate of Jimenez. He really, it's been a, a very quiet work rate. You know, we saw him against Cody where, you know, he was busy all the time and just totally out work for him. But really, Doug is just doing this a little bit to Jimenez. Good right hand through Doherty over the top. Doherty, a man who's never earned big money from this sport. Retirement was never an option for him after what happened. He had to carry on boxing for his fiancée Caroline and his delightful nine-month-old baby daughter Rachel to earn the money for the house. All oh, caught there with some head punches. Has to be careful there, Doherty. Swapping punches on the ropes. Yes, that's more like the work that we're used to from him and his. And he had good success there when he did that. The good sign for Doherty was that he wasn't really hurt by that. He came back well. Right hand from Jimenez. Doherty does just want to hold on for a moment, having taken that one. I think that just might have stung him a bit. As Doherty's work has just stopped a little bit, he's starting to neglect the jab and standing in front of Jimenez. Lots of leather being thrown by Jimenez and little flurries. Not all of it getting through, it's the showy kind of stuff, a lot of it. He's a bit of an arm puncher at times, isn't he, Jimenez? Yes, he is, and that's what he's doing there, but he's thrown a lot of punches, and some of them are getting through, and they will knock the head back a bit. And they will probably take the eye of the judges as well. Ferocious intensity about the battle in there at the moment. Doherty's covering up well, though. I don't think he's been hurt by any of those. And every so often, scoring with his own counters, it's very, very difficult to score when they're fighting on the same little square foot of canvas like that. Yes, him and his, I think, just are working him a little bit inside there. I'd like to see Doggy get back to the center ring, use the jab again. There seems to be a cut by the left eye of Doherty. Oh, yes, there is. Look at that. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. That is... Uh, that's a nasty cut for them to deal with. Uh, let's get a quick word from Barry McGuigan. I think it's... It it's a magnificent performance by Drew Dowd. Nobody could have imagined that he would put up this sort of a fight, and I thought he, he's, he's done brilliantly up to now. And if he can keep this fight and, and they can sustain that cut, if he can get his fight, uh, get the fight back again at long range, keep the centre of the ring, and throw more punches if he's still got enough left. This is very, very close. I have it dead even. I know that uh, I know that um, Glenn has. Jimenez out in front, but it's, uh, in my opinion, it's dead even, but it's, uh, it's a tremendous performance by Jimenez. This is a good right hand, or, or good, tr tremendous performance by Doherty, a good right hand from Jimenez. He's sort of turned things around at this stage. 
use on the cut. It looks to be on the eyebrow and doesn't look too serious at the moment. Dunkey Jow at the cut man in the corner doing his stuff between the rounds. But Jimenez did pick up the tempo in that round as if he knew things might be slipping away. Um, just to correct that, Barry was thinking that Glenn had uh, Jimenez in front. He does have Doherty in front. It is a good moment now for Jimenez. He's really up the work rate and putting on the pressure. Now Doherty has to match this somehow and match the intensity of this man. And if he can, get back to working behind his jab. Yes, I think the wise move here, move here would be to grab, to try and turn his man, get back to the center of the ring where he can use his jab. It's dangerous in there, especially with the cut to be so close. He can bang heads, he can be cold, silly shots. Get back to the jab. And this is where Doherty wants to be. But he stoked up the fires a bit, Jimenez. I think he knew that things were beginning to go against him. And they still might. Just imagine if Doherty could pull this off. It would really be a very, very emotional victory indeed. But there's so much work still to do. So many questions to answer. This, was, this again, Jimenez getting on top more and more. And this is where Doherty's got to change styles. He's got to try and he's got to hold. He's got to get off them ropes. I still think that Jimenez is hitting the arms with a few of those shots when Doherty's covering up on the ropes. It's hard to see how much is really getting through. And every so often, Doherty is countering quite accurately. It's uh, it's tough to score. Yes, but for me, there are punches that he doesn't need to take, whatever they are, whether arm punches or what. If he can get a little bit of distance, use the jab, he's much better off out there. Particularly good left-hand counter from Doherty. Chance of Doherty coming up from some of the Scottish fans who've travelled down here to Mansfield. I think everything here is going to depend on what happens from this point in this fight. It's been a tremendous effort from Doherty, this. Really has. Two headshots and a good body punch. Sunk in the left hand, right cross two from Drew Doherty. Yes, but Doherty has to keep the punches going. He has to try and keep Jimenez off balance because he's just gaining in confidence, looking for his punches more and more. Now, they were match matching each other almost punch for punch at times in there. Jimenez threw more leather in the round. The only question I would ask is, did he land with more leather? Yes, I, th I think that will take the judge's eye. He, he had... Doggerty on the ropes for a lot of that round and you know he was getting through with some of them. Doggerty was catching a lot but he, he just allowed himself to stand there too long. That's Daniel Jimenez in his eighth world championship fight tonight. The man from Camoy in Puerto Rico where he works as a recreation leader for the council. And you see there he's getting through with some of them. Doggerty doing well getting the hands up and catching a lot of them, but I still, he, he doesn't need to be there. He's, he's better off holding, turning his man, and getting behind the jab. I, I make that an even round. I don't think those punches were landing, none of them. I don't think any of those punches landed when he had his back to the ropes. Not one. And Doherty did some good work on the counter, so I wouldn't give that round to him and his myself, but... the old argument going back to the old Sugar Ray Leonard Marvin Hagler fight back in 1987 where Leonard threw a lot of leather and people were saying well a bit of pat punches were hitting arms and gloves tough one and only the judges will decide tenth round I think Doherty will have been Hold in the corner. Just try and keep the center of the ring. Try and keep him on the jab. He's doing a nice at the beginning of this round. Thick Scottish accents all around here in support of Drew Doherty. 
Good sharp jabs from Jimenez. It just seems to have changed tack strategically a little on the outside this time. Yes, this is the first time Jimenez has started to box like this, using a, a bit of lateral movement there, nice quick jab. There's a good right hand, a good long right hand went in from Jimenez. It's showing he's a clever thinking fighter, Jimenez here. Can go to plan A, B or C by the look of it. And it's just giving Doherty a few problems. The old hit and run from Jimenez. We haven't seen that from him before. Doherty's always looked better on the outside. Good combination punching from Jimenez. It's interesting to see him box like this. This is the first time he's done this in this fight, but he's doing it well. Good head, head movement and a good jab. Doherty did score with the double jab. But he's finding it hard to land in this round. A lot of his own jabs are out of range or they're being slipped. Doherty's having to chase his man. This is good stuff, really, from him and as he's just getting in and out before Doherty can come back at him. And the Puerto Rican winning the round at the moment. <laughs> Bell goes to end it. Good work that from Jimenez, clever, won the round. Doherty never quite solved the problems. Now then, Tommy Gilmore, the manager of Drew Doherty, is with Gary Norman. Well, Tommy, we've got Drew slightly in front. Uh, I'm probably looking at it a bit more objectively. I, I've got it at the fight more or less level. I'm trying, trying to, to, to not be too optimistic so it at the end of the day, but I think the boy is putting up an absolutely magnificent, I mean, the way he's digging in deep, you know, the other fella, the cleaner punches are all coming for Doherty. And if we if, if the, we're locks in tonight, then I hope to God that you're right and you know that he has two rounds in front. So well, that's how he and Glenn have got it. And one thing, the crowd are getting right behind him. Everybody in here wants him to win this fight. But I think the way he's really dug in, he's really showed what a brave fighter he is, the way he's dug his shields in and, and fought back in a couple of cases. Because remember those early body shots would have slowed a lot of fighters down. Drew's still plowing on it because he wants to be the champion of the world. Absolutely right. Thanks. Trying to lift him again in the corner. That's uh, Tommy Gilmore, the man who's had to help Drew Doherty through these past three months. 11th round. Must be pretty close. This just to correct what was said there. You've got the fight at the moment. I think what? Yes, level. Got a level with with Jimenez winning the last two rounds. He's pulled himself right back in this fight. I have Jimenez one point ahead at this point. Last six minutes, and Doherty here has to give it everything. Everything he knows to try to become a world champion against all odds and all predictions. I must say, I never met anybody ahead of this fight among the usual crowd, the usual suspects in the boxing game, who thought that Doherty would win this. But what an effort he's put up. Listen, really, he's just got to lift himself once more. He's got to try and finish this fight strongly. Remember how Jimenez finished very, very well against Cody. Good right hand there. And then if he slipped, he just seemed to lose his footing for a moment, Jimenez. Yes, Doherty just caught him as he was about to throw his own right hand. And he felt the weight of that just doubled up there. Well, this is where Doherty just has to match the work rate of this Puerto Rican. Sneak little right hand from Jimenez as well. Well, it might help because Jimenez has stopped the boxing tactics and is standing more in this round. So that gives Doherty a better target to, to land a good jab. Well, even if he does lose this, Drew Doherty here has put up perhaps the most outstanding performance of his career. 
Yes, it really has been a, a fantastic performance. His concentration has been very, very good. He's just got to keep it, keep it going. Countering well, with his backs to the ropes again. Again, a lot of leather thrown by Jimenez, and noticeably little of it getting through. Yes, he kept his hands up well and covered well in the corner, but he didn't wait. Hang about there long, dog, and he got straight out. seems to be one who just has that ability to do enough to prevail in fights and he looks strong and busy late on here he's taking the fight to Doherty Jimenez inside that's looking to hold I think he's tired at this stage one round to go Glenn scored that round level. So, Glenn, the scorecard is vital. Let's, uh, you've got it, I think, 96 96, yes, haven't you? Yeah, I've got it really poised. I think a big round for the man can, can switch this fight. It's been a, a terrific performance from Doggerty, and really he's just got to give it everything he can in this last round. 10, 105 to 105 is how Glenn's already 11 rounds gone. I gave you the, the score after the uh, previous round. There it is. Set out for you. Glenn scoring that last round level. I have Jimenez just ahead at this point, I must say. But how are those three judging us from Germany, Italy, and the American uh, judge Samuel Gluet scoring it? The last round. They touch gloves. An inspired performance on Doherty's return to the ring after that tragic night against Jim Murray. But has he done quite enough here? It really has been a superb effort against a world-class performer from Doherty. Doggerty starting this round well, just trying to get on his toes at the beginning there. Again, Jimenez gets him on the ropes and trying to, to use them on. But Doggerty trying to turn him. A good little right uppercut counters, and there a left hand counter from Doggerty. Good shot, that one, from the Scot. One of his best. And I think Jimenez was just hurt a little bit by that. He's Stop that all-action style of his for a moment. Yes, I think Jimenez is looking at the more tired of the two. There's very little in his punches where Doggerty's a nice and sharp. These are arm punches, really, from Jimenez, and I just hope the judges aren't giving too much credibility to that. He's throwing out his arms, but I don't think many of these are landing. Certainly not cleanly. They seem to be hitting the arms and the gloves. Of Doherty, who's countering at times quite sharply. Heads coming close together. Doherty with a little complaint to the referee. Closing stages of this one now. We have 80 seconds remaining. And Jimenez is making this this round messy. Doherty's just got to try and get a little bit of room to make the clean punches tell. The cleaner punches in this last round so far from Drew Doherty. Is this enough to give him a real upset victory? and win this title it's on a bit of a knife edge we just don't know last minute two nice little left hooks in close there from Doggerty. he's trying to get free from Jimenez but Jimenez is trying to keep him nice and close good right hand from Jimenez Doggerty's corner were asking us between the rounds between the 11th and 12th how we had it and I'm sure it was relayed to Drew that it was pretty level. Blood from the left eye of Doherty. The corner have done a terrific job with that. It's not really got noticeably worse. The clock ticking down. Last quarter of a minute. Both of them pumping out the gloves, trying to take the eye of the judges late on now. 
It could even depend on how this last round is scored. It might very well depend on that. You'll hear the bell any time. Now, that was just a slip by Doherty. He threw so much into the left hand, he fell over. They both raised their gloves as Drew Doherty caused one of the great upsets in the most improbable of circumstances. His dad's there. He looks pleased. They wonder. They wonder. I think he won that last round, Glenn. Yes, I think he could have done it. I think the cleaner punches were coming in from Doherty. Hopefully the judges saw that. Jimenez was throwing a lot of arm punches, but nothing was really landing in there. It really, it's down to the judges, but a tremendous fight from Doggerty. It's too tight to call, really. Sometimes when you get these tight ones, the, the home fighter sometimes gets the benefit of the decision. And uh, come on, Doc, get it, boy. Oh, I'm calling for the judges to give it to Drew Doc. Can you see for that guy out there? I hope you caught me as a mate. Well, they're going to be so disappointed if it hasn't gone his way. But um, I just wouldn't like to say with that one. No, very, very close, but I had it all hinging on the last round. Really, the judges, it's how they saw it. I thought the cleaner work was coming from Doherty. Here's Glenn McCrory's scorecard. Gives it to Drew Doherty by one point. But really, a tremendous performance from Doherty. To think of the quality that Jimenez has been in with, a really great performance. Magnificent performance. Uh, one or two discouraging signs being made by the corner. So I wonder if they're saying, or they've got word that maybe things haven't gone their way. I'm just totting up my scorecard, and I, I think I've just got it to Jimenez. Just. Doesn't mean anything. We've been wrong before <laughs> many, many times. We have. We've been right quite a few times as well, mind you. But um, this is so close, I think, that it's, it's hard to argue. How much credence were the judges giving to those arm punches of Jimenez? Naz is shaking his head. I don't think he thinks that Drew Doherty has got it. And uh, there's some pessimism in that corner now. They seem to have got advance word. Well, the one or two thought Jimenez got the benefit of the doubt with the decision against Duke McKenzie and against Cody. But uh, let's hear how, they, hear how the judges have scored it. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have a unanimous decision. Uh, Judge Arthur Ellison scores the contest 118 to 112. Uh, Judge Samuel Vivette scores the contest 118 to 113. Judge uh, Costello Stuckey scores the contest 115 to 114. All three in favour of the winner and still uh, WBO has got it. Jimenez keeps the title. Of the world, Daniel Disappointment for Drew Doherty after a superb effort. And I must say, I, and I know Glenn McCrory as well, are in sharp disagreement with two of those judges, one of whom managed to see that fight to Jimenez by six rounds. What was he watching? It's unbelievable. Now, got a very, very how many judges? 118, 112, 115, 114. And really, I, at times, you're amazed by what the judges are watching. I think the Italian judge, you couldn't argue with that, 115 to 114. Sure. We Jimenez. knew it was, it was a close fight. Um, he obviously could have seen it that way, but um, 118, 112 was a, a disgrace. Just asking one or two other people just to make sure that we're not wearing blinkers here. They had it all close as well. They're very, very upset. We'll try to get a word with Drew Doherty, what he made of that. Jimenez gets it and keeps his title, and let's go back to Paul and uh, Barry McGuigan for a moment. Thanks to Ian Dark, and first we'll just ask Barry McGuigan for your opinion about the verdict. I thought it was much closer. I thought the Italian was right. I, I would have given it to Jimenez by one or two rounds in a very, very close fight. And even then, maybe one round would have been closer. But what a performance from Drew Doherty. That's, uh, nobody would have, and no, none of the, 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 guy, the hacks from Fleet Street would have imagined that he could have fought that way. He put up a wonderful performance. Thank you, Barry. Let's hear from Drew Doherty with Ian. Well, the first question is, Drew, that was a superb performance from you. What did you make of the way the judges saw it? 
couldn't really tell you. I know it was a very hard fight. I mean, I just leave it up to the judges. It's, it's their decision at the end of the day, and they gave it against me. I mean, I'm not one for complaining, so that's the way it goes. Let's have a quick reaction before we talk to you again from Tommy Gilmore. I think your opinion about it is a bit stronger, isn't it? Well, I think anybody who could see Drew Docker if you're losing by five and six rounds, they've obviously not been watching the same fight. They're very, very close fight. I happen to think Drew won it by one point. I think the way the boy dug in deep, I think he's showed what a great fighter he is. And I think he's, he's, he showed people who thought that the wisdom of taking the fight was wrong. I've got a man of character here that deserves to be the world champion. How did you manage to produce a performance like that, Drew? Because we were saying, you know, after everything you'd been through, you've, you've come out and produced the performance of your career. Simply because I'm a true professional. Simple as that. I mean, I'm not going to get in there half-hearted. Half I'm going to give it all. I mean, there's no point going in there if you don't want to do it, and I want to do it. I, want to be, I mean, it's every fighter dream to be world champion. And unfortunately, I failed tonight. Very much. Cheers, mate. A lot of people, um, and you were saying beforehand that you wouldn't know how you felt and how it would feel going back in the ring until you hear that, heard that first bell. Well, how did it feel? As I said to you before, you know, I'd been sparring and that, and it didn't feel, I mean, because I'd been out of the ring for so long, that, that probably was a big factor in how I'd feel, you know, going back in the ring, being out so long, but, I mean, it was just the same as usual. I mean, I fought for somebody else, and I don't want to mention it, but that's how to up such a hard contest. You, you were inspired. I mean, you said that to me last week. You were fighting for Jim Murray's memory as well as yourself, weren't you? I tried not to, but I do always speak yourself. Yeah, OK. A very emotional, Drew. That, that was a great performance from you, Drew. And I think tonight, Tommy Gilmore, let's have a last quick word with you. Drew's gained in defeat there, hasn't he, in a way? Yeah. He's always been a man, you know, and I don't think, I mean, we've got a loser tonight, but in my heart, it's the finest performance I've ever had for any fighter. I think it was unbelievable because he was under extreme pressure and everybody got behind him and it was superb. I'm so proud of him. Yeah, we're all proud of you. Thanks. Hard luck, Drew. I know I'm away from home, but the English crowd have been magnificent tonight and I'd just like to thank them. OK. You've done that. Well done. He's won everybody over, hasn't he? We may well see Drew Doherty in world title action into the foreseeable future on the basis of that performance. More from Barry McGuigan and the rest of the team when we come.